Hey everybody and welcome to the next park playthrough. So the next scenario on the list is Haunted Harbour, which is uh, back over on the Corkscrew Follies or Added Attractions uh, scenario pack list. Uh, so the last couple we did was uh, Arid Heights, which is in Libby Landscapes, and then we went all the way back to Forest Frontiers, which is in the kind of RCT base game. So yeah, jumping back over to um, Corkscrew Follies for now. So uh, yeah, Haunted Harbour, uh, it's got the objective is a guest count of 1200 guests by the end of October year 3. You're given kind of a decent size, well sorry, a, a decent uh, start in terms of a, uh, a park, so there's lots of rides already. Um, I think it was the first uh, park, I think it, yeah, it would have been the first park in RCT which introduced the concept of non-destructible rides. So you got the uh, articulated wooden coaster called Woodpecker, which uh, you can't modify in any way. Um, you kind of just have to leave it as is. You can uh, you can play with the color scheme, but that's really about it. Um, and the other ride is the Ghost Train, which you, which is the same sort of thing. You can play around with the color scheme, but can't modify the layout. Um, you also start off with a few flat rides around the place, including the Carousel, Spiral Slide, and Ferris Wheel. Uh, you can move them around or delete them as you please. Uh, I, uh, I moved the spiral slide just a little bit there just to kind of um, get it kind of more flush up against the coaster there just to be a bit more space efficient. Uh, in terms of space, um, unless you want to spam the kind of beach and water area of the park, uh, the amount of usable space is actually quite limited to start with. Um, fortunately though, the surrounding land, uh, there's lots available for purchase and it's also quite cheap. It's around uh, 20 or 25 um, dollars or euros or whatever currency you're using um, uh, per tile, which is like very much on the cheaper side. So it's, uh, it's not a big deal to get some more land and expand, which is great. And certainly something that I'm going to be doing quite a bit of throughout the playthrough. In terms of a park style, uh, it did take me a while to kind of uh, figure it out. I, uh, I particularly struggled to come up with a pathing system that I wanted, uh, but I eventually decided to go with kind of a, a couple loops. Uh, yeah, I guess they're called loops around the, the chain hill of the coaster woodpecker, um, as well as around the, the back of it as well. Uh, the park itself, I'm going for kind of a, a compact sort of style. Um, with elements inspired somewhat by Blackpool Pleasure Beach in the UK. Um, I'm also going to be sticking with uh, the much older style sort of rides, uh, just to kind of go along with the the already present theme of, uh, of older rides. So the, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but the articulated wooden coaster is something like 68 or 70 in-game years old, which actually means that it's hit uh, the vintage or monument or historic kind of uh, status. Um, in terms of uh, age for an RCT ride. So you can actually charge um, just above, I think, seven, uh, $7, so depending yeah, depending on what the currency you're using. I'm uh, using dollars here, but um, yeah, around about $7 per ticket, um, which might seem a lot higher than what you think, but yeah, the, uh, uh, the way the maximum ticket price you can charge works is uh, once it hits a certain age, it hits that, yeah, that monument status, and you can, you can actually go... Uh, you can start charging pretty reasonable amounts uh, for your coasters again. So, so yeah, given that we're uh, not going to be able to build a whole lot of coasters in this park, well, well the way I'm planning to build the park um, won't enable me to make a lot of coasters, I mean. Um, I think it's uh, pretty important to jack that price up um, to start with to um, get, get a nice uh, base income uh, going for the park. You can also increase the price of the ghost train uh, by quite a bit as well. Anyway, in terms of uh, in terms of building rides and attractions to start with, uh, the first thing I kind of uh, did was um, rearrange the pathing system just at the kind of base uh, near the the entrance of the wooden coaster. Just wanted to make it a little bit more symmetrical, and I put a twister or scrambled eggs just at the uh, kind of at the end of the midway there. Uh, then, in an effort to uh, kind of make the the building that the ghost train was in a little bit more prominent. I added the haunted house or haunted mansion uh, right at the at the top there. It looks a little bit out of place. I might have to play around with the terrain and wall textures there for the building, but um, yeah, my my aim there was to just make it just seem like somewhat of a more giant uh, or a significant mansion there. 
Yeah, I then built that uh, path around the back of the wooden coaster and kind of uh, linked it up with the, the path that kind of ended up at the merry-go-round before. It was that path that kind of zigzagged its way back down the hill on the other side, and I just kind of connected the connected it back up there. Um, there's probably a bit more path um, more path per square foot than I'd usually do on average here. Um, and the reason I'm kind of doing that is because I don't see this park being that big overall. And with a guest count of you know 1,200 and above, um, it's going to be hard to kind of disperse the guests. So I wanted to make sure I've got plenty of path down just so it doesn't get too crowded um, in places. So yeah, that was kind of my thinking there. I added a bit of a boardwalk to the to the uh, kind of entrance, of, well not the entrance of the park, but the kind of end of the midway there around the twister. And what I'll eventually probably do is uh, connect some path directly down to the sand on the on the beach there. I'm not going to put any rides or anything. I uh, might put a shop shop or stall there eventually, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to put some paths around just so guests can like you know make use of that nice little beach. So. Yeah, I have to try and find a pathing style that doesn't clash too much with the sand texture. Anyway, the next coaster in the park uh, end up making a really small uh, Virginia reel. Uh, I'm not sure, some of you might have already picked up on this, but it's uh, very heavily inspired by the, I think it's the only remaining or only operating Virginia reel in the world now. It's uh, called uh, Tyrolean Tubs, I believe, in um, a park called Joyland in the UK. Uh, apparently it's a miniature version of the uh, of a Virginia reel. I think I think for the most part Virginia reels back in the day were quite a bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I, that's kind of what I was going for there, and I think it turned out pretty nicely. It seems to be very much uh, targeting the um, like more of a family style sort of ride. Um, so that's kind of why I've got lots of kind of different coloured wall, wall textures uh, around the kind of boundary there. Um, there's a few fences kind of cordoning off the uh, the uh, switchback sections which I kind of tried to emulate as best as I best as I could there and there's a there's a few uh, shrubs and trees around the place as well because the uh, the one in real life has uh, has a few scattered around the place and it's actually a pretty pleasant looking ride I then get started on a bit of a pier which I thought was uh, pretty essential for, for this for this park I really wanted to get something kind of going out and interacting with the water at least a little bit. I do I do add in a few double paths which is uh, always risky in RCT1 but given that the the park is on the smaller side I am not too concerned um, with guest pathfinding issues there. They should be able to figure it out eventually even though it might not be the most efficient pathing system. End up jamming a spiral slide right up against the uh, kind of cliff face there. I know I've already got one in the park already but I, uh, I really did want to just make use of that little pocket of space there. Um, put a, a swinging ship just at kind of the base of the shore there because I thought that would that would fit in pretty nicely there. And I also end up moving the ferris wheel uh, from across the other side of the park. I just I uh, I thought it would look more appropriate kind of on on the pier rather than just sitting over by itself. Um, and I do also have other plans for that space. Uh, for later on, so that was my thinking there. It's also a, a really, uh, since you can add um, entrance and exits to the uh, the narrow ends of the ferris wheel, it makes it really nice and space efficient and just something easy to kind of add to the end um, of the path there. Uh, something I forgot to mention a little while back was uh, I, did add in, I did add in some uh, wooden wild mouse uh, coaster as like a, a bit of a support structure for the for the articulated wooden coaster. Just, uh, I don't know, just going for a bit of uh, realism, I guess. Uh, we then move on to the uh, next coaster for the park, which is a uh, side friction coaster. Uh, now this um, this one took ages for me to figure out. At first, I was playing around with just the regular wooden coaster, and what I was trying to go for was a, a bit of a scenic railway uh, sort of ride, um, but I just couldn't get anything, so I was I was playing around off camera a little bit and I was you know trying to figure out a coaster that would look nice with that sort of style but I was just really struggling and um, I did come up with a few potential options but I was uh, I just wasn't really happy with 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 them in the end so what I ended up doing was uh, changing the track style completely to a 
pure side friction coaster and uh, was pretty happy with the end result here. So yeah, although I would have loved to stick with the kind of scenic railway sort of uh, type where they typically use the longer trains, uh, I did have to stick with the one car per train um, here because unfortunately in RCT1, didn't realize this for a while, but you can only use the single car per train for the side friction. I think it was in uh, RCT2 and uh, RCT Classic where you can use uh, three cars per train for the side friction, but yeah, you're stuck with uh, stuck with only one for the for RCT1. Anyways, no big deal. In terms of layout, I was uh, I took a little bit of inspiration off uh, Leap the Dips, uh, which is the oldest roller coaster in the world, also a side friction style coaster. Um, but instead of going for the figure eight uh, kind of layout, I did go for kind of a a longer or stretched layout overall um, but I did kind of copy the uh, stacked uh, sort of track so the uh, the track on Leap the Dips is basically like stacked right on top of each other I think uh, basically three levels of track in places usually it doesn't look the best in terms of a support structure but I'll, uh, I'll add in some wooden wild mouse there uh, to kind of beef that up as well but we'll see anyway I think that's just about it uh, thank you all very much for watching Hope you enjoyed the build and look forward to hopefully seeing you in the next video. Alright, thank you very much and cheers. Bye.